Hello, everybody. Um, the big interview's back on the road. Yeah, the World Cup was fine and all that kind of stuff, but talking to footballers sitting down, even on a blustery, wet, bright day, <laughs> to have Adam Lallana on the big interview is a privilege. Thank you very much. for. We've just That's spent crazy. five minutes explaining to you what the hell we do. W was it convincing at all? Does it sound it sensible? extremely convincing, okay. yeah. Okay, all right, let's... <laughs> Let's put that to the test. You're on the big interview. Thank you very much indeed. I don't often, we, we spend a lot of time in the prep saying, how will we begin this? Because we want to start well. We want to engage people's minds. I've never done this before. I've never read out praise before. I want to break a habit and do this. We've got lots of socios who support us all the time. And Gary Harding wrote into us when he heard that we were interviewing you. Great choice. These are good words. Adam was a joy to watch playing through the leagues at Saints. Incredible poise and beautiful balance. Pochettino undoubtedly took his play to another level. Go and see his goal against Hull City. I'd be keen to know what changed to trigger this. Was it tactical, fitness, increased self-belief? But this is the key point here. It was amazing to see, and as a Saints fan, I love this phrase, I'll always treasure the period where Adam was pulling the strings and shooting us up the league. One of my all-time favourite players. Let's not go back and analyse that just for instance. It's, it's, that's not a salary slip, it's not a trophy, but isn't that satisfying mm. that you've made somebody feel like that with what you do for a living? It is extremely satisfying. And I think um, he's exactly right in what he says, that Pochettino kind of came to the club and the bond I, I struck with him was really, really special. Like, really special. He was like a father to me for the year and a half I worked with him. And the only sad thing is, that, is the period of time wasn't longer that I worked them for. Um, I was captain, I was made captain at 24, and I was feeling the pressure of being the captain in terms of just a bit, bit of weight on my shoulders, trying a bit too hard, a bit too much, which, which is only natural, mm -hmm. being 24, figuring out things. And he just came into the building and just removed that so quickly by communicating with me finding out what was the matter and even noticing that something wasn't I wasn't as I said it's genius that he, he could I didn't even know there was a problem <laughs> um, so yeah obviously mentioning that period and, and Pochettino um a, a huge fun period for me that was. I think for as much as the people behind this podcast and everybody listening to it adores football, it's a hard truth that the industry isn't necessarily jam-packed full of people who care, who are able to quickly understand human beings. Certainly in British terms, I'm a lot older than you, mm. and, and British football for a long time was very like the army. You'll do as you're told. Yeah. You'll go out to battle. It was regimental. It was hierarchical. And then for a long time, Football wasn't a caring, soft, interactive mm. sport behind the scenes. The influx of lots of different continental ideas has, has gradually opened that. And I've spoken a dozen or more times to Pochettino on and off the record. And he, he's a very charismatic, interesting mm. man with lots of different pictures in his head. And he's quite a romantic man. He thinks about life in romantic terms. And therefore, I think it's easier for him to try and go, I'm going to help this fella that... that you know, yeah. ultimately will help me. Yeah. And he's, he's, I think he's skilled at that because he, yeah, it actually matters, the dialogue. Yeah. He's not just doing it as a task to go, right, let's, let's get more out of one of my players. Nah, I think it matters. He cares. And since that, I, I love falling in love with my managers. Like, I love it. And he's, he's probably the first manager that I've, I've fell in love with to, if we're going to speak on that level, you know, like yeah. if he was like a father figure to yeah. me. Um, and I'm not embarrassed or at all to, to so say It's that. a great expression. Um, even I remember when I signed my new contract a few months later at the club, my mum, my dad, my, my sister, my wife, we went for food with Pochettino, Jesus, Tony, Miguel, and, and the way he made my dad feel that evening, like so special, he just went out of his way, even though he didn't speak the language properly. And I'm, I was obviously young there and thinking like, I only appreciate it probably more now than I do when I, when I was 24 because you know, I'm a father myself now and I'm 10 years wiser. Um, 
just shows football's not all about tactics, coaching. It's about relationships. Um, and, yeah, he, he was like a, a father to me. There are many people now, particularly coaches, use the, the phrase emotional intelligence. And, and there, there are also a lot of phrases that just become pat phrases and people repeat them and, and they, they lose meaning. But it's best, and there are courses in studying how to develop emotional intelligence, but if it's natural, if it comes from the character, and I think there's a lot of it in Argentinian and Spanish football. Having lived in, I'm not an unreconstructed Scot, yeah. Know, I'm chippy, <laughs> I'm argumentative, <laughs> you know, the Dukes come up pretty You've quickly. You've not lost a twang either, have you? I try not to. <laughs> oh, you can cut through the, the, the hard Spanish accent, can yeah. you? <laughs> but when you go to Spain, I mean, I fuck, I don't, it's all fucking hugging yeah, and yeah. cheek to cheek. And I'm like, I, oh, I, all right, I, I love that about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's good that you do. And yeah. I'm, I'm, my sarcasm is directed yeah. at me. Yeah. But they talk about family all yeah, the time. Yeah. It's really yeah. important to them. They see it as fundamental, not yeah. soft. They they talk about communications and they'll touch you. How are you doing? Yeah. And uh, it's a very yeah. different idea. Yeah. If from... I was to see Pochina now, he kissed me on both cheeks yeah. and hugged me. And so much warmth. Like I remember when he invited me around his house and his wife come out with uh, you know cakes on a tray. Like here, yeah, what what do you want? What tea? Just the, the warmth and the emotional uh, context to, to mm -hmm. how he is is something you probably can't teach. Mm -hmm. Like you, you might not be able to go to university and get mm -hmm. that qualification. It's that's cultural. It's charismatic. Yeah. And the minute he walked through the door, um, he walked in with this aura. Um, when he was in a suit, the way he smelled, I, I just, I remember it that to this day, I, I was in, straight away, I was just taken back and was like, wow. In football, those things matter an awful lot. They're not, they're not everything by any means, and they're, they're, they're not enough. But you've, you've, ca I didn't have this written down, you've cast me back to us travelling across frozen Scandinavia from one country to another to go to the banks of a loch, as I call it, lake, where Sven Joran Eriksson lived. And... You know, we hoped that Sven would be colourful and interesting, but he was a very charismatic person who sat, we sat in his home and he pointed down to a summer house on the banks of the lake where he'd, he'd because the local pastor had asked him to, he brought in um, immigrants from Afghanistan who had no life, no way to earn money and couldn't survive. And, and he said, yeah, well, they can live there for a few months in my house in the bottom of my garden. And the atmosphere was like that. And he opened up and he said, um, yeah, Mancini. Viali, I knew Viali well, and, and he coached both of them. He was selected for Santoria, not by the president, but by two players, Mancini and Viali. And he was talking about Mancini, and then he stopped and he went, but he's no, he's no David Beckham. Beckham, when he comes in a room, oh. <laughs> and, and he was almost lost in his reverie yeah. for the aura, the presence yeah. of David Beckham. And whether that chimes with Pochettino or not, because they're two, two very different guys. The way in which some people just, uh, and, and again, I asked, who did I ask recently about it? Um, Stephen Gerrard, uh, when he, uh, and I, I was interviewing him when he was coaching, and I said, you should, he said, no, that's, that's false. That, that might be what people perceive in me, but I'm shy, I, I'm timid, it costs me. That aura thing is elusive. It doesn't belong to everybody. No. And, and if it's not real, you can sniff that it's not real. Oh, of course, it's... Uh, the, our manager has it here now, like De Zerbi, si similar to Pochettino, like their their aura and their charisma is is similar. Um, Pochettino is probably a bit more romantical, I'd say. Um, De Zerbi is slightly more passionate. Um, whether that's an Ita Italian thing, but it's still with warmth, you know. You hear six of the seven of them bickering, and, and if if you can be misunderstood that they're arguing, but, yeah. but they're they're hugging and kissing two minutes later, and <laughs> and you know, in in our environment, a very English British environment, it, it means you, conflict immediately, means conflict. and your hackles are up, and, and you're probably not speaking <laughs> for for the next couple of weeks, and and to have that in the building here, and and the same with Pochettino when he brought that to Southampton. 
it just kind of like it relaxes everyone in mm. a way because you're allowed to disagree and mm -hmm. and have conflict but it didn't mean that relationships no. were broken it, it it just meant that, that they wanted that they were different i wonder if you know not to take a single don't misinterpret me a single thing away from Deserbi or Poch, both of whom will come back to if you'll allow me. I wonder if there's a de degree to which you are pre-programmed to have a little bit more interest and empathy in that. I know nothing about your grandfather except he was born in Madrid. I do know that the last time we met, I was being kicked out of an Andy Robertson interview, which we'd had plenty of time on. But Liverpool, as you should in the training ground, run a schedule and say... Yeah, well, at this time, it's Adam and his, his Spanish tutor. Yeah. Out you go. And Andy was like, uh, OK, <laughs> we, we, must be, we, we must be out. So I don't know if you believe in genealogy or what does or doesn't get passed down, but your, your abuelo was a madrileño mm. uh, and came to this country. What was the background to that? To what extent? Because he's your paternal grandfather, if I'm yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my grandfather was born in Madrid. Um, came over over when he was 16. Couldn't speak the language. Uh, you know, knew knew no one. Studied to become a nurse. And Do you know why he changed countries? Broadly. I I just think for 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 a better life to cut to come and study for, for a better life, and um, he was proper proper Spanish. <laughs> Um, tough. You could perceive him as tough, but he was so so kind and warm. But I'd say strict. With mm -hmm. you know, kind of went to church. Was a very religious man. Went went to church every, every Sunday. Um, very traditional, but in a suit on a Sunday when he went to mass, uh, always I'm... smelt with his, like with his cologne. And I still have that to this to this day. And it reminds me of him because he sadly passed uh, three years ago. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of him and that I have a bit of Spanish blood in me. Um, I, I feel that, so, that I love it when people say to me, the first, one of the first things De Zerbi said to me was, you, you don't play like an English football player. And when someone says that to me, it, <laughs> it makes me feel really good because I'm like, oh, that's because that's you know, my grandfather's Spanish. Like, we've got a bit of Spanish blood. And I've probably not spoke about that on the record m much, really. I don't mean to pry, but I'm, um, I mean, I've lived 20 years there. My daughter was born there. I'm very interested, so I'm not prying. But, and also, I, it feels already when we're talking, we can, we can work out concepts rather than saying, oh, I want a linear answer. Like, for example, when you, your dad's older than my daughter, <laughs> but my, my daughter was born in Spain, still feels that she's Scottish, is at uni now in Scotland, but when she comes back, she's got Catalan and Spanish, and she feels she's coming back home, although she feels Scottish. Therefore, I wonder, for your dad, who's got a much closer relationship to Madrid and his father, but was born here, I guess, yeah. each... It, it, everybody's perception of genealogy and the blood and the ancestry is up to them, I think, instinctively, you know, on a mental level. Yeah, look, my, my dad, you know, was born up in, uh, in England. He's very, very British. Didn't learn the language, didn't pick up the language. You know, my, my nan's English show, kind of my granddad never spoke Spanish, hence why, which is probably pretty sad, really, because it would have been nice for, for my dad to obviously know, know the language and um but even even though that's the case that I still feel there are subtleties of of Spanish in in the family um and, I, and it's important I want to you know speak to my kids about that because mm -hmm. I don't want it to even though you know the, the generations as as they go on I don't want it to leak out of of the family I, I think I want that bit of Spanish. It's healthy. It's, well, it's in the name. It's Layana. You know, people say Lalana, but it's Layana. Um, my nan would always remind people, oh, your, your, your grandson's Lalana. And she'd be like, no, 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 it's Layana. <laughs> Muy bien. Muy bien. <laughs> and um, I, I want to, you know, educate my kids when, when they get older that, you know, our grandfather was Spanish. You and, could always 
bring James Milner in as a tutor because <laughs> exactly. when we were there, he was still in that phase when he was only speaking to his kids in Spanish. It, 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 right, exactly. Which is remarkable. It is remarkable. For a Yorkshireman. Um, and I'm not yeah. going to test you, but how, no, don't, how did your Spanish go? Me. Did you? Because you, know, you don't have a lot of free, not just time, but you don't have a lot of free mental time when you're a footballer at your level. Um, I, lo I, was in, I was learning Spanish for two, two and a half years, and um, I was at the point where I was, I was ready to like, go in. If I was to live in the country, uh -huh. I'd, I'd pick it up like that. Yeah. But probably wasn't brave enough to speak it like with um, the Spanish players at Liverpool. I would in moments, but then because it was an English environment, mm -hmm. they'd always want to practice their English mm -hmm, or more mm -hmm. speak to their English. Um, and I come in, come here and I just it just struggled for the time. No, no it's a lazy excuse that. No, no, um, that's not my point. I, I, I all had the of time us. at Liverpool. I had the time. At, I had the lessons at the club. Uh, the, the tutor was coming there. Mm. It was, and it, and it was great. And um, I come here and I, I commute a lot more. And it is, it is, it is sad. It, it's a pending assignment. Exactly. exactly. Which is, you shouldn't be guilty about it at all. What, what then? You know, it's it's not about fate. You, you, draws happen. It, it, but like you, you you spent a lot of time. In your career, you played Spain a lot. You played Madrid a lot. Um, a teammate of yours from the FA Youth Cup 2005 went and became pretty legendary. There, yeah. Gareth Bale's just retired or just yeah. announced his retirement. You went toe to toe with a player that you really admire in terms of Modric. Um, what what was it like consistently facing Spain, scoring against them, playing Real Madrid in terms of that? That real mix of things about you know your grandfather or well, your grandmother was English, nonetheless she was married to Spaniard. I don't know if the family generally had a team, whether it was or wasn't Madrid or Atletico Barcelona or what. But over the period, you, you carried the, the Spanish English flag into 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 battle, into yeah. competition too, uh, with, with some sore nights yeah. too. Some sore moments. You know, we're talking about Bale there, his overhead kick. I've seen it a few times yesterday when it was announced on on my. Were you reaching for the off, the off, like, uh, the over kick. Stop it. Um, but I look back there and I think you were beaten by Madrid. You know, who've won the Champions League five times in the last seven, eight years. Um, not to say that I'm proud of losing to Madrid, but if there's a team that t to lose to, it's Madrid. Um, the legacy and the history around around the club and I hope one stage in my career in my life takes me to Spain mm -hmm. on a, I don't know, if my wife's listening on a more permanent basis because um, I feel like I feel like not that I've got unfinished business that I because I've not started anything in Spain but I do feel like at some point in, in my career within football, not playing, whether it's coaching, that I'm, I'm going to be there in some capacity, you, working. You, I've, you've been careful in how you've expressed it, so I'm going to help you a little bit yeah. by saying, I went to Spain first in, 92, in 1982 for the World Cup, and I just went for, on the lash. Let's have a month there, a yeah. month there. As a Scotland man, fucking brilliant. Yeah. I can't even tell you most of the things that went on. But... I crossed it, and I'm sharing this because you were being careful about expressing almost like mm, there's, there's not a voice calling to me, but I feel there's something. As we crossed from France to Spain via train, and in those days the gauge of the rails didn't meet, so you had to stop at Irun until they switched the gauge of the yeah. rails so you could carry on. And we, we, we travelled about 15, 20 minutes into Spain, and it was the old days when the windows the, and the doors of the trains could open you. Uh, I just went like that, I smelt it, and I... I mean, the most extraordinary sensation of that, I'm home. And it so happens that yeah. my great-great-grandfather was a ship's captain. He went down with a cargo in the Bay of Biscay, just off exactly yeah. where I was. Now, I know that sounds completely fucking local, but I was like, no, 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 no. This, this is my territory. And when we went back, when my wife said, listen, you, I don't really want to go, but you do. Let, let's, let's go to Spain. We just pitched up and, man, it, it feels like 
home. Mm. It feels right. So yeah. that <laughs> nature calling yeah, you or that, culture calling there's, you. There's something there. My dad's got an apartment just outside Marbella. They, and my mum's 60 tomorrow, and they're, they're there. Congrats. Enhorabuena. Yeah, they're there five, six times a year now for a couple of weeks at a time. So they're spending more time out there. Mm. Like I said, it, it's just, I just feel there's, something. There's something. That, that there's, in the future, there'll be an opportunity or something, and I'm going to sit down and be like... Let's take you back to the corporeal. Let's take you back to just playing Madrid for as much as you're able to. And, and I don't mean incidents. I'm not testing you mm. on what happened in the games. But like you, you played against both an Ancelotti and a, and a Zidane side. Um, they're, 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 they're held as being a, a club, and I've lived there 20 years, whereby they often play based on having great footballers and therefore that can elevate them in moments. They're also um, categorised both in Spain and abroad as a team that doesn't necessarily want to control a ball, control a game, no. but they'll, they'll consistently do that to you because of something intangible. And yeah. if you, it, it, these weren't your games last season, but if you look, look at last season, I mean, fuck me, it was Glenn Close and Fatal Attraction. They were dead against Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah. They were dead and buried against Manchester City. They were dead against Chelsea and still they, when you think about your games against mm. them, do you come away with a conclusion about how I can identify this? They just want to hurt you in their moments that can go, that whether it's in the balance, bang, they hurt you. They make the right decision at the right time. They don't panic because they know they've got Benzema to take the chance when it comes. It's not a question, he's taken the chance. Modric, when he gets in the area where he's the wrong side of you, is he going to play the through ball? Is he going to play the right pass? Not even a question. Hurt. You're hurt. Mm -hmm. It's done. Mm -hmm. And that's when you say Madrid, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the Madrid I, I, I think. Do you encounter that often in football across your life? No. They're a rarity. They're a rarity. Mm -hmm. They're a rarity and, they're, and that's why they've been so successful. Like, What style of play does a damn like, coach? Hmm. I can't tell you. I, I couldn't tell you. It, it was that that group of players. You know, when like even when Ronaldo was there, it mm. was they were just efficient and set up to hurt you. Whether whether they had the ball, whether they didn't, mm -hmm. and and it resulted in countless Champions League. You're not at Liverpool, and this is not advice for them. They play them in a, in just over a mm. month, so this is not. Mm. Adam Lallana tells Jurgen Klopp, don't, don't be fooled for a second. This is me scratching an itch. Look at Modric, I think you still consider him around pound about for, the best. Pound for pound, the best midfielder in, in the world. Remember, I'm a Scot who saw Scotland partially eliminated from the Euros because of our home performance against Croatia when a win um, after the draw yeah. with um, England, yeah. a win would have done. And, I, and I've, I've spent a long time watching Modric. I'm very friendly with Darren Fletcher. He talked about Alex Ferguson the year before. He went saying, like, we've signed Modric, he's coming. And Fletcher went, why? And then looked at him more and went, uh, at this age and his skills, does a team like Liverpool man mark Modric and go, we'll go 10 v 10? Because if you give them any space that's, that's, at all, that's tactically. Not, that's, not a bad, that's not a bad idea. I think the man has that much respect and he's that good. Yeah. And the age doesn't matter because he's never been lightning quick no. without the ball. But with the ball and the timing, he can play till he's 40, you know, mm -hmm. like no problem. Mm -hmm. like no problem. The guy up here is just... As I say, pound for pound, I think the best midfielder in the world. And, there, and this might not, you know, be something that you can categorise having played against them, but it, there is a desire. There's a, there's a Croatian thing, just like there's a Madrid thing about like we're, you're not beating us. Yeah. You, you, I'm not yeah. today, not next week, not ever. Now, occasionally, everybody loses, but the elite Croatian sports men and women, not just in football, are like, no, nah, mm. no, 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 you're not. No, I'm winning this. What I love about Modric as well is, and you see him when he's in a Croatian shirt, is that. He hasn't got the Galacticos around him. Correct. And he doesn't care. <laughs> he doesn't... When someone misplaces a pass and it doesn't go to Modric, he's not arms in the air looking at them. He's head down, running goes and tries and get, gets it back. Mm. 
that's for, for a new for someone that I watch football. That's what I look at mm -hmm. when I'm watching football. I, I'm not looking at oh how good Modric is. I know how good he is. I'm looking to see how he's like reacting when his teammates lose the ball. Does he get frustrated and chuck his arms about, or is he really the ultimate pro mm -hmm. and the best footballer in the world? And, and yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Which which is again why. He's, he's the best there is for me mm. because it's not just his, his ability, it's how he adapts to playing with players that like, aren't as good as him as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And there's a humbleness there. He's done, yeah, apart from, you know, you'd imagine that your point about <clears throat> players around him would, would naturally most correspond to the midfielders around him, but it's really strange he's been the number one tutor, including the coaches, for Vinicius. Because Vinicius was like, you know, I'm a Mustang, I'll just do what I want, I'm a style, you know. And Modric taught him on and off the pitch. Yeah, all right. But if you get that far and you give me the ball, oh, you'll get it back better. Yes. You'll get it back better. Yes. And you can see him. Yes. You hear about what he tells him verbally, but it's like... And then it's is, like is that... Have oh. you... Have you... Is that true? Yeah, no, like, no. I've spent time spent talking time to there. coaches and players saying that... Yeah. Because I adored Vinicius because I didn't care that he wasn't yet the final article. And I hated the way that... And this is not necessarily for you, but in Spain, I felt he was talked about differently because he was a gauche strange accent, black Brazilian. And if a young Spaniard was playing like that, the adjectives to, to describe him would have been different. And I was like, no, wait. And, and often people like David Weir have said, when you're scouting and when you're analysing, don't always look at what they can't do. Look at what they can do and then try to adapt and change yes. what they can't do. So I thought, you, and I went back and watched him at Flamengo. Then I watched the process of, Benzema was angry with him and lost his temper in a, in a Borussia Mönchengladbach game. But, but Modric went to Vinicius time and time again. You think that the, that the crowd want you to and we want you to, to beat another... No. If you then, if you've done this much and give it to us and then your movement is right, not only will you get it back, you'll score and you'll be even more popular in your contracts. Right? And he listened and it just changed everything. Do you know what's so um, unbelievable that you say that is if you look at the players we've recruited in the last three, four years... Um, Obviously, Alexis McAllister, Ar Argentinian, mm. uh, Moises Caicedo, Ecuadorian, mm -hmm. um, Julio Enciso, Paraguayan. Mm -hmm. And he's the lad at the moment that you look at him training, he signed in the summer, and you're like, wow, this mm -hmm. guy has got, he's quick enough, he's strong enough, he's got this shot, he's, but he, wa he wants to do everything with the ball, everything. And you're screaming at him to pass it, scream, scream. He's, he, he's not wanting to like pass it at the right time. He's just he wants to impress. He wants to, and we're educating him. Yeah. It sounds like very similar to what Modric was saying to yes. Vinicius. You know, yeah. they're, they're so they so what they want to. You know, they 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 are workers. The South Americans they want to work and work and work and impress and impress. All we want to do is is help you. Yeah. You know. We haven't got the pace, or <laughs> us players haven't got the, the speed or the tricks. But in England, like, or at the top level, if you move it, you'll get it back. That's it. And then you'll, 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 be the, you'll still be the superstar, you'll still be the hero, you'll still have the, chan, the fans chanting your name. Probably more so. More so. But look at, you look at Cristiano, I mean, he, he got, it's a different culture. Portugal is not the same as, as Brazil or South America. But at, at the point when, Really, all the media industry was saying, well, like, too many stepovers. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's not very constructive. It's reductive. It might have been accurate. But the players were saying to him, uh, and, and it got very... It, it ushered Vanistro out of the club eventually. But Vanistro's point was right, and it has changed, Cristiano, that once you've got here, if you release, I'll be on it. And that will increase the team's chances of winning. All right, it'll increase my goal tally, but it'll yeah. increase your value too. And he did. Yeah. So it took, if it even took a man that you know, smart and determined to be the best, a little while to understand there's a difference between showing and winning or showing and yeah, being yeah, effective. Yeah. It's natural that young South Americans from certain cultures will think like that. So I know neither of us is being critical, but the process of how to teach them and persuade them, I think is hard. And when, when did the, the switch turn with... with it, 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 was, it was gradual, obviously, because there was a, there was a slight dis... I mean, I'm, I'm, we're talking in millimetre terms. There was a slight disconnect with Zidane in that Zidane is a massively hands-on coach. He's a 
very good man manager, mm. but mm. he was getting the best out of the senior players. Yeah. Vinicius was playing, but if if Vinicius, if it suited Sudan on the team, Vinicius played on the right. Where at the moment or then he he couldn't. He was one dimensional, not in that he hasn't got two feet, but he needed to play brilliantly from the left coming on to his right or as a second striker. Both of those things he could handle. If you put him out there at that stage, he wasn't he wasn't particularly confident if he came right. in onto his left. And that yeah, was yeah. frustrating to Zidane. Now he played well and he did a lot, but the massive development all came to fruition during from the moment from two two against Borussia Mönchengladbach where uh, Benzema comes off and says to Mondi, don't pass to him, he's playing for the opposition and, and it was caught on tape and it, it accelerated then that I Benzema, that, Benzema yeah. went, oh fuck, okay, that's too far and within two games, Vinicius had released early a ball at Hitafe onto Benzema, said that goal and Benzema went, whoa and he reinvested in, in, in talking and, and helping right. then Modric had been, Ancelotti came and went, you're my guy, I believe in you yeah. You'll not be playing 60 minutes unless there's a reason yeah. you'll be playing 90 minutes. Yeah. When games late on, you'll be, unless there's a very good reason you'll be playing on the left, go out and do it. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, it's a, yeah, the yeah, process yeah. you're involved in, Navajo, it's, yeah, yeah. it's slow, it's like a jigsaw, it, it doesn't go like tomorrow. It, so yeah. it was a pot simmering, but phew, what's been worth it? He's, he's, he's extremely exciting. He is. Um, you're, you're quite good at this um, because Gareth Scriven was about to ask you, Gareth Scriven's one of our supporters, one of our socios, what's it like for Adam to play in the same club team as World Cup winner Alexis McAllister and how good a player is Alexis? Um, I think it's been easy for Alexis at Brighton since if you score your first Premier League goal in the 90th minute at Palace, you're a fucking legend already, you know? Yeah. Did, you, did you have to explain to him how it is that a team so far away could be a derby match and how significant it was for him to get a 90th minute equaliser against Palace because he could not have understood other than, you know, we've, we've got a point in the last minute with 10 men. But for, for, for Brighton, Palace is a big game. Of course, it's a big game, yeah. And I still question whether I know exactly how the rivalry <laughs> still uh, is. Maybe is. nobody does by but, now. But um, no, nah, Alexis, you know, what a special player and a special, special person. He... Um, Took him a bit of time to settle. Yeah, coming in, um, learning the lang language. His English is incredible now. He's picked it up, um, and he's he's a he's a player that if, he's so pure how he plays, in, um, the way he lends the football. He, he uses others. Um, there's no selfishness like at all in. In, in the way he plays and it was it was so special watching him during the World Cup mm. you know, not not playing to begin with and then him getting used and then proving himself and then not playing so well that there's no way this guy doesn't play and then at the end to see like Messi looking for him like Messi was like looking for him to link to to play I mean, when Messi's looking for you, <laughs> that's to, to help build attacks. To You see them doing this, don't you? Uh, Alexis's role was almost to mirror where Messi was. Whether Messi was deep, he'd then take high positions. If Messi was high, he'd like, drop. And that just shows how, how much he understands like, his, in, his football in intelligence. OK, he's not the quickest, he's not the strongest, um, doesn't matter because up up here, it's like Modric, he's not the quickest, he's, he's not the strongest, but so smart, he knows that the football's faster than anyone, anything. And Alexis is of, is of that ilk, he just is. And he's a, he had to battle tough moments here to, in the beginning because he was he's very lockdown. In, yeah, lock, coming over at lockdown, adapting to the culture, the language. A very introverted, shy guy. Um, like Messi. Yeah. But I, th I think yeah. off the pitch, I think things like that matter. Yeah, of course. That, they, so that the people recognise one another's character. Of course. And I, I always went out of my way to, to make sure he was okay because I, I knew he was such a wonderful person, player, because I could see it. 
just need a time, time. Mm. Sometimes you just need time to adapt mm -hmm. to the surroundings, the shitty weather, mm -hmm. um, you know, Brighton, the language, the league, the mm -hmm. relentlessness of the league, how physical it is. And um, ah, the, the reception he got here from everyone um, when he came back was, it was incredible. I need to ask you where you are, because you're, you're a busy father. Where were you, where, how did you watch the final? I watched the final with, with my eldest son at, at my house. So just as, as, as France press, as, as the ball, you know, um, Deepu Martinez kicks, yeah. and, and France press at left back, and the ball goes to, first of all, to Nawal Molina, who, whose introductory game at Aleti was a horror ball where the ball came out and he fluffed and Villarreal right. took it and scored and he keep playing the can play but it's, I mean it's simple for people like you but right back in a World Cup final the ball gets pressed it's coming at you wild and he just volleys it to Alexis it's a volley pass and he knew exactly where it's going and you're watching this with your boy with whom you speak a lot of football and the volley pass goes Alexis and then it goes Messi and then it goes Alvarez and, and Alexis is gone you must have been off your seat. I mean, people watching that go, I don't know if, 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 if you don't understand football to the level, you might not give that goal the credit it deserves. There's so many actions in that goal. Alvarez is pressed to win it back. You know, the manager kind of like telling him to, you know, almost like whipping him like he's a jockey. And, and then Alvarez <laughs> is... And then they say the ball goes to was it Mer Molina? Molina. It, 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 the Plays press it, means means it comes loose to Molina at, at right back ish. The, the ball round the corner from Alexis is like incredible, like how he does it so far. And then the the two touches from Messi, I can't remember if he used his knee and and then played it round the corner. Like how he cleaned the ball, like got it under control round the corner. And Alexis' initiative the, the to. The weight of the to, once he's played his pass to spin and go to the space that Messi's dropped deep for. Even the ball we played to Di Maria, how he's lifted it. He's lifted it a little bit because if the defender's stuck his leg out to block it, he's lifted it a little bit so it's like always going to get to Di Maria because even if he puts his leg out, it lifts it over and then Di Maria done the best. It's, it's one of the best goals I think I've ever seen ever, ever seen, in the context, what's, ever seen. What's the vicarious pleasure? I mean, you want to be that player yourself, you want England to look, lift the trophy, but what's the vicarious pleasure like when it's a, a teammate and a friend doing that? It, it was as if I was Argentinian. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's, I'm speaking for the whole of Brighton, by the way. The whole of Brighton. Congratulations to everybody who recruited him and loaned him back, and, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty joyful story. I, I must have not yet met him. I was there in the tournament working exclusively with Spain, and um, it's time for him to concentrate on work and training and playing mm. and winning and whatever. But in, in the months to come, I'd love to I'd get to know him a little bit. Just And also, when you see him tactically, what a right foot. How, how's his left foot shooting? Not as good as his right. Yeah, because <laughs> it's on, but it's on a very high level. Yeah, he's he's you can use both feet. He's to control and pass. Us, I know that, but to to because he's played a lot where he's he's the or he's the roving aggressive midfielder, or he can play like yeah, a, it's called a ten, but it's like in behind the striker maybe, or also he can form a a wall. And what, what, thankfully now, I was growing up when you started playing it was just called the Makaleli position. And I, I will not hear the phrase holding. No. Nah. The fuck does that mean, yeah. holding? So this double pivot where you're defensively ordered, but you also you add intelligence as to how the play is maybe restarted once it's won back, that he can play equally comfortably all Anywhere. these three games means that in an open game, he can be any of those three yeah, depending yeah. on the needs of the situation. Yeah. When, when you understand football like Alexis, you, you can play anywhere in midfield. Hmm. Anywhere. You, listen, we, we, we won't stop long on Messi because maybe you'll say to me there's, there's, there's not a lot new to say, but um, you, w when you see him walking around and scanning, you, you talk to people saying, that I see a bit of something that's non-English in your play. I've always felt you remind me an awful lot of Griezmann who, one, 
skips through a football match full of the joy of being on the ball, wanting mm. to be on the ball, but also is comfortable in finding spaces, linking areas. It's a real, watching you play, it's a real joyful experience because yeah. it's clear how much you enjoy enacting your ideas or linking or creating space. That's, and it reminds me a lot of Griezmann at his best, not Griezmann the striker at Barcelona. So that's very enjoyable indeed. But when you, when you look at a very different animal now, Messi, to, to, to what he was, that your information brain must be very good to, to be able to do what you do. It's not just about technique or experience. You, you've got to have a lot of um, lateral peripheral vision and, and processing in your head. It's, mm. it's, you have to. When you watch, people now are accustomed to saying, well, Messi walks. Yeah, fine, OK. And he walks. The next thing is, because Pep explained it years ago, he walks because he's scanning for information. Yeah. But to scan, to take the right information, to, to store it and process mm. the information you've stored mm. in milliseconds mm. is a little miracle in itself, is it? Isn't it? It is. It is. And I'm, I'm still looking at him and I'm watching him and I'm, le I'm still learning. I'm thinking, like, I need to do that more. I need to walk more. Like, I, I need to walk more, take information more. You know, I'm not getting any younger. Messi, <laughs> Messi's not getting any younger. No. So ha thinking, how, how can I prolong my career even more? It's take more pictures, yeah. be in the right area more often, find the area, the right area, and stand still. So I'm, I'm thinking of ways how I can be in better positions more often and stand still. What's the key to, to achieving that? To, I mean the, the key to, to, to disciplining yourself or, or simply percentage-wise, walking more often or, or finding yourself, uh, 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 selecting and, and then finding yourself um, in the right spaces. The confidence, not to, to, to avoid the, the need to run. Co co yeah, exactly that. Confidence that, and this is, I suppose, what like, I've probably battled with my whole career. It's, it's being secure, not letting my insecurities get the better of me. But I run anyway. I'm a team player anyway. I run too, I've run too much my whole life, in mm -hmm. my opinion, if I look back. Mm -hmm. I've not focused enough on the, my technical, my Spanish side. Yeah, yeah. B because I'm in England and it's, do you know what I mean? Like, next action, run, run. Sometimes that overshadows the other part. And I'm in a stage at the moment Especially like with how the manager wants to play, mm -hmm. find the space and stand still mm -hmm. and look around mm -hmm. and look around, get pictures, link the game. Um, Messi's been doing that his whole life. That's why he's a genius, you know, because he doesn't feel that insecurity. Like, am I, like, am I walking? What if, what if, like, we watch the clips back and my teammates that see me walking, it's like, I'm fucking walking. It's, fucking, it's the best thing for the team. But it's the why, isn't it? Yeah. It's the why. Because he's taken. He's so fresh when he gets the ball because mm. he's not following the ball, following the ball. Whereas I look at some of my games, but I'm following the ball, following the ball. It's a cultural thing, Tyrone. It's not just you. I think that British football, not just English football, has suffered from that over the years. It's. I remember Canuti at Sevilla saying to me, you know, I, you know, pff, London football, it was fine playing for Spurs in my time. But here at Sevilla, I choose. And the crowd are like, they're patient, they wait, they know. And if I choose and I do the right thing, then we win. And, and yeah. they, so they don't have that cultural you know, wall to, to, to vault, whereas we, we're all, again, there's a huge age difference, but we were often all taught, like, the harder you work, yeah, the more you run, yeah. and the crowd are like, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, then they, and it's a common expression, I sweat through the jersey, I sweat through the badge, but, you know, fuck's sake, you're making work for the laundry, not winning yeah. trophies as such. You've got to be smart running. You'd it? like to think so. You've done it again. I'm, have I given you praise from Chris Hennigan yet? I'm sorry, there's more coming. Can, can you take it? <laughs> um, look, there's a lot about... Klopp and, and how his ideas al might have aligned with you. But from my position on the COP, says Chris, it certainly looked like Adam reveled in the demand of the high press and controlled aggression that came to symbolise Liverpool's early styles under Klopp. Fine. Can I set that aside? I just wanted to share that with you. Because when you say, and this is a reasonably accurate direct quote, I'm blown away by his ideas, De Serbi, and how he sees the game. He's very, very tactical in the training pitch. Lots of phases in of play and deep build up, very structured. Yeah. Got to be there are different situations where he wants you to do things. He gives you the, all the options. Yeah. There are other phrases. Um, the, because a lot of 
people now talk and fitless speak, I think it gets bandied around a lot, but it doesn't often get explained. I'm a relatively basic fella, so when I didn't understand what transitions were, I asked Damien Duff and he explained it really nicely. Try to explain, <laughs> one, De Serbi's ideas, and two, lots of, lots of phases of play and deep build-up. Yeah. To, to try and make the ordinary person understand. So the phases of play and deep build-up, there, there's... It's, to start with, it's not tiki-taka for the sake of it to no. look good. It's not that. It's the end goal. And the end goal is to create 4v4, 3v3 in a big space to go and hurt the opponents. Um, you know, where your Vinicius Juniors or your Julios for us will do what they love doing and create 1v1s. Um, the, the madness behind the me methodology is find the spare player, mm -hmm. draw the pressure, draw the numbers out, and then find the spare man. And, and I, don't, I can't go into much more detail. I, I, you know, I feel like the way De Zerbi works and his ideas, I don't think there's anyone else working like him in, in, football, in football. Does it initially, to some players, feel risky? I might be embarrassed, I in, might make a mistake. In, in isolation, it can feel risky, it can look risky. The, the difficulty is that you need 11 players doing the right Fully thing. Fully on board, yeah. If, yeah. if you've got one person, not the races, or not in sync, then you're playing with fire, big mm -hmm, time, mm -hmm. big time. You're barely, you're leaving your mate for shit. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If you're yeah, not given an totally. option when he needs you, because we're, we're waiting for pressure, we're getting pressed by five, Particularly four, five, six at times. Often your central defenders. Center yeah. So you need to give them the right option at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we, we're constantly working on that. Um, it's been so stimulating, yeah. the, the, his ideas. But it's know. like a symphony orchestra, I think, is a comparison, because you know you, you can kind of make nice music, but if, if the drum beats at the wrong time or the cymbal crashes just at the wrong time, there's only one thing wrong, yeah, yeah. it's still a fuck up. Yeah, you know? of course, it's a fuck up. Yeah, and, and, but the joy when it works, apart from winning, and apart from praise being heaped to it, <laughs> and you're, the actual joy of participating in that where everybody's got to think and move in time. Oh, it feels amazing. It's... It does. It, it feels when it when it works because you work on it in the training pitch and and then when it. I've played in games where you press and you're, you're pressing, and they get out. Yeah. The f the feeling when you run back is fucking horrible, right? Because. So if that's what the opponents are feeling like every time, <laughs> yeah. then that's what I say to myself. I'm like, even if we don't go through and score. It's just a jab. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It feels 100%. like a jab. Um, because I've felt that before. But it's so stimulating. Learning. You've got, you've got to know. I, I like not just knowing my own jobs. I, I need to know everyone's job. So. What well, makes you rather more able to interact with them if you know what they're... Yeah, and I can help on the pitch, you know. And that's, you know, that, that's what I really enjoy when I have new managers is to be that guy that can help educate the players and help get everyone on board. Um, I've had it when, like, when Pochettino come in. I was going to say, you, come in, Nigel like, Adkins was very, I don't know about your relationship, I'm not asking that, but he was extremely well liked by many people and there was a real contrary reaction when Poch came in. So having watched that and, and being an agent of change here and having to think about, well, what might happen or how do I, uh, I'm not revealing, I'm not being unfair in revealing secrets. Uh, David raved about what you did with Crofty about bridging the gap and standards and, and yeah. teaching people and then helping the change, which is a, an enormous thing to be capable of as a, as a still playing professional. If you're training to be a coach or you're aspirational, but just to take that responsibility and think about what is change like and what does our culture need to be and how do I help embed the new man? That's, 
Yeah, because special it's, abilities. it's tough. Come, you know, Roberto came over from Italy, not being able to speak the language. Mm. The club were in fourth position. <laughs> like the expectations of, imagine that coming here and we're fourth in the league. Brighton, you know, beating United already, beat at Old Trafford. It's not easy. So I felt I could help by making sure the lads, because um, I felt it immediately with this guy. Mm. Half hour in this company, <laughs> I, I just knew. That's impressive. Um, you just get a feeling, you know, the way mm-hmm. they speak, the way he wants to play. Um, so then I felt I could help by helping the lads get on board as quick as possible. Of course, it was going to take some people some time because we were mourning Graham. Mm-hmm. There's no way, other way to put it. We were mourning Graham. Of course, lads were going to. He's changed some of their lives, made them better players, um, given them success, given them opportunities. Not all of us like change either. A lot of us find it a little bit uncomfortable. Don't. Of course, because then you're thinking, what if he doesn't like me? Yeah. Um, but I, I knew I could, I could help galvanise the lads quicker. Um, and then when, it didn't take long for them to buy into his ideas and... I didn't realise how complex his ideas can be at, at times. So then <laughs> you're in meetings and you literally come out of the meeting and you're like, fuck, I need to cut the paracetamol. Uh, <laughs> my head's <laughs> pounding. But in, in, a, in a good way yeah. because you, you're being educated. How lucky are we? Like the thousands of people around the world are like, I can work on Monday again. Whereas for good days and bad days, yeah. to be tested, to be stimulated, yeah. to be educated, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, be, to be changed... We're very lucky people to to work around this industry, right? Oh, of course. Um, I want to be kind to our colleague and to young Mrs. Layana mm. and say that I, could, I would and could do this for another three hours. You can't. So let me give you a get out. Our last question comes from Robert Ryan. He asks too much because he wants an all-time 11. Robert, a, a friend of the show and a socio says, you know, he likes your play. Could you name your best 11? Let's not do that. Can I just ask you simply? Random choice. Your favourite three players played with, played against, never played with. I don't care. Your best three and your favourite game that you'll take away with you forever and ever when you hang out your boots. Um, I'm going to name this player. My f- I'll, name, I'll give you three players. The first one I played against when I was at Southampton. Um, plays for Arsenal. We lost 6-1. Santi Cazorla. Um, <laughs> That's magic man. Well said. The, 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 way he, <laughs> the way he played the game, and he was this big. He is. <laughs> and he had both feet, and I was, the admiration I had for him, how he could play, it just he defied almost the odds, really. I mean, how else? Well, it just it doesn't matter. That just shows it that. It shouldn't be possible if you just matter. look. Yeah. It, do, it, does, it doesn't matter, though, because the ball's faster than anyone. You know, and if your mind's fast enough, size doesn't matter. It doesn't. I'm saying that to my son always, you know, because my son plays. And times I see, you know, he gets disheartened when the big lads all bit. I'm like, listen, the ball's faster than anyone. Like, let's get that straight early <laughs> on. So we lost 6-1. And you know, then Nigel Atkins was the manager. He absolutely destroyed us that game. Um... Do you want players I've, I've been on the same pitch with? It's in my, in my choice. You, it's free. Watched, played with, played against. Don't care. But you've only got two left. The next one has to be like Iniesta. Because I still, I still watch his clips now. I watch his clips and the elegance. Um, that, that Barca team... It's just, it's for the purists, it's okay, the people that love football, that like playing football in a certain way. And again, I feel that that's, the, 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 the Spanish in me mm-hmm. goes towards them types of players. When I was at Liverpool, I, I, Jürgen taught me there are different ways to, to win football matches and win Champions League and Leeds. And it's work, hard work. You know, that was the German in him, that was... And I almost felt like I'd become institutionalised in that whilst mm-hmm. I was there mm-hmm. to work, work, run. And it just shows that there's different ways to have success. 
but you know, since coming away from Liverpool and away from the intensity of the football club and you know, Brighton's different mm. Liverpool. I'm kind of feeling like my older self qualities walk a bit more like fucking hell I, I'd never have said that at Liverpool you no. know walk because I'd have been <laughs> paranoid that I weren't ready for the, for the press and to and for second balls again not saying that that wasn't right because that was Jürgen's way and I followed Jürgen you, you, I wanted you, to follow you did quite leader. well you, you, it, exactly. you won a Champions League exactly. you won a Premier League exactly we're both established that, that that's super that's fine it, exactly you're just differentiating I'm different exactly and I think so, Santi Cazorla, Iniesta, mm-hmm. and I'm going to have to pick another. I'm going to have to pick Steven Gerrard, just because he was a hero growing up. Yeah. I was lucky enough to, to, to play with him for a year. Um, Did you, do you agree with my point when I said to him, because I, I meant it sincerely, that he's got a... Extraordinary aura oh, he's, he's, as a person. Yeah, he's, I wasn't wrong there. And I think for the first six months a year, I was shit scared being on the pitch with him, making a mistake, giving him a shit pass. And he'd hate that, that he'd have that. Yeah. He would hate that, you know. He messaged me only at the, at the weekend after our, our result and um, saying, like, keep doing well and stuff. And he's he's. Stevie G, do you know what I mean? I remember like saying to one of the lads, like, Stevie G just messaged me. <laughs> but he's, he's just a normal person. He'd hate to, he hate, he would hate it knowing that I felt mm-hmm. like that. But that's just how big and fucking good he was. Mm-hmm. Um, he'd walk into a room, the treatment room, mood would check, people stop talking. And he, he, he wouldn't like that. That's why. So maybe that's on us to change around him. But also, if we were accurate in how we began this about aura, some people just, it's just there. It's mm. not an act, it's not on it. I don't know how to categorise it. It's up to us, maybe how we react to it. But initially, with it, because there are so few men or women who are like, yeah, well, he, they don't even have to say anything initially, or they carry your admiration that you've you've stored up from hearing them, watching them, mm. working on them. It doesn't max. It's all lives. It's not just sport. When, they ha- when somebody has that, it's a, it's a mm. massively powerful asset. And it's not easy to work out how you interact no, with it. No, it, it's not. Because his, his aura is completely different to, say, Pochettino's or Jürgen's or Roberto's. Um, there, was, there was a part of me that feared it, you know, being on the same pitch as him, which... I, I had to kind of keep talking to myself, saying like, "No, no, he's, he's your teammate." Like, um, so I needed to like adapt to to being working with him, you know, because he was not just mine, but so many other people's idols. That, you know, maybe others dealt with it better than 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 I did, but I've I'd, I've got to mention him in Iniesta and that's and a nice Kuk, ma- that's a nice midfield. Because, yeah, okay, nice off the cuff, field. that's I'm pretty happy with that. I'm sure there might be, <laughs> yeah, but there I might be one or I, two in there. But that, they, they, I only allowed like you three. Felipe, so. Obviously, Felipe. I played a Felipe, and yeah, you know, it kind of breaks my heart how things went from at Barca. Yeah. Um, lovely, lovely young man. Lovely kid. But lovely, it, yeah. fa- lovely young man. Lovely family. It, their what reputation he carried from from Anfield was just oh, like, the what, best, what and he behaved. Completely within those uh, parameters at Bus 102, it's just that, and maybe now isn't the time, but when we talk about your peripheral, I can't give him a bad ball or just TVG, and we talk about Alexis and how he works with Messi, I didn't interrupt to say I, I've seen countless footballers of excellence who can't interact with him, whether it's because of ability or vision yeah. or whether it's because of yeah. intimidation, whatever. And so there was a Felipe, small Felipe element needed of that. to be the superstar. Yeah. It, he was at Liverpool. I was happy enough. Felipe, where are you, mate? I'll give you the ball. Where are you? Mm-hmm. If he wanted to want to me, I'll, I'll run for Felipe. Not a problem. Like, and maybe it, the problem like Game after game, that. I saw it. I'm sorry, I saw it. Okay. You know, it wasn't maybe. bad intention. It wasn't lack of effort. It was, you were like, 
But no, you, you, because we've got the, we're sitting in the gods, so we're sitting in almost like an analytical position in the press tribune. You're like, oh, he's done it again. Or he'll give when he shouldn't, thinking, I better give it to him. No. Or he won't give when he'll dribble when he should. And, and down there, with so many players who are playing a system, it doesn't look like it, but it's internalised. And yeah. that's hard to break into. It's hard. It's hard because... Iniesta's oh, and, and Javi's and they've been working with Messi for years, so, so they they just know subconsciously where to be, when to play it to win the relationships, to go there with that price tag, mm. to not be the superstar, mm -hmm. okay, to not be the main man. It's a big load. It's a big load of, at the time when the coaching is changing. That's and a tough, tough challenge. So he's on the bench. Let's leave him on the <laughs> yeah. bench for the for Adam's <laughs> top three. Um, there's been a massive, massive pleasure. No, An really, education. Really I, I came. To, to learn and to, and to listen, I have done, and my, I'm even. I mean, I, I know the chairman, and I know David, and, and I was already excited about what's happening. I'm still more so now. It is exciting. May the rest of the season bring you all the things that you want, yeah. wherever it might be, whether it's trophy, whether it's European, or just good yeah. football and enjoyment. Yeah. Um, what a massive pleasure! Thank you very much. Thank you Tom for being man, with thanks us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.